This video is about using active reinforcement to fight the cracks that will try to form inside your concrete. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete maniac. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing beams that look like this, but that's kind of like an engineering way to do it. I'm, I'm really talking about beams that look like this or possibly like this, those big, beautiful, awesome, uncracked beams that use active reinforcement. Yeah, that's what we're talking about today. So the beams, when you load them, you're gonna get tension in one area. And we know that we wanna put reinforcement where there's tension because that area is gonna wanna, ah, no, crack. This is not fun, this is not good, nobody enjoys it. There are two ways to try to stop these cracks. You can use mild reinforcement or active reinforcement. When I hear the word mild, I think of salsa. Salsa, <laughs> I can use it on my tacos. I love me some tacos, right? And a mild sauce is nice and it brings out some of the flavors. But active reinforcement is kind of like ghost pepper salsa. It's kind of like the crazy, insane stuff that a little bit goes a long way, that it can really make something be awesome, but you better be careful with it because it can give you a belly ache as well. When we talk about mild reinforcement, it's talking about rebar, fibers, or possibly bamboo. They have no internal load, no load placed on them before they get placed inside the concrete. And they only help us or help us mainly after the cracks form inside the concrete. Let's talk about active reinforcement. These are a little bit different beasts. Here's the primary player seven wire strand. You can see these seven wires kind of wound around the middle. You can see the kind of helix thing shape there. This is kind of what it looks like in profile. Yes, it's spun around. That's how it's manufactured. That helps it bond to the concrete. That helps it stay together. There's another type of active reinforcement called Diwadag bars named after the Diwadag company and their inventor. And they're mainly used in post tension applications with very, very specialized nuts. They twist on and pull. Again, they're active reinforcement because they have an internal stress that's transferred to the concrete. The useful stresses for these materials are all over the map. I've showed you rebar, that's the mild reinforcement, 60 KSI. The active stuff is much higher strength, 270 to 150 KSI. And these active steels are heat treated to make them low relaxation. That means under a constant strain, you'll get a constant stress. And that doesn't always happen with all steels. Here is what a stress for strain diagram looks like for these different materials. Again, stress is how much load per area you can apply and strain is like how much they can move. And so you get some idea of what their engineering properties look like. Active reinforcement is internally loaded. Yes, internally loaded. And then that load is transferred to the concrete and they help fight cracks before they start. So how do you do this? It sounds easy, right? Stretch the steel, release the steel, and transfer the load to the concrete. Sounds so simple. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. There are two ways primarily to do this, pre-stress and post-tension concrete. I've got another video where I go in the deep details about these, but now I'm giving you an overview of kind of how active reinforcement works. And to explain this, I'm gonna start out with a simple sponge. Then we're gonna take a hair tie and put it on it. You know, the one that holds your ponytail together. And then we're going to put it down kind of towards the bottom. And then look at that, the sponge is gonna spring up. We're gonna take a load, a candle, put it on top and it doesn't go flat. It doesn't go flat. And we take the candle off and it goes back up. Oh my gosh, this is active reinforcement. So what the heck just happened? Well, we had our sponge. We took our hair tie, thanks Jess, appreciate for that. We put it on the sponge and squeezed it together. And it caused a load, kind of like an internal stressing. Now that load was placed below the neutral axis. That is a structural engineering nerd word for centroid or balancing point of the cross section. We're below that and that is going to kick our member up. It's going to deflect it up and this is called camber 
this upward deflection or downward deflection caused by pre-stressing called camber. And this happens inside concrete as well. Look at this. Ugh. These yellow lines are showing if this beam was totally flat and it's not, it is cambered up and you can see it in this picture. Now, if you go to put an outside load on this structure, there's still gonna be tension try to form. But if my pre-stressing force or if my force, my internal force R is greater than the tension, it doesn't crack. The concrete doesn't really go into tension. It tries, it goes down a little bit, but it doesn't crack. And it's kind of like this. McLovin shows up, he's causing trouble, <laughs> bam, knock him out. That's kind of how it works. The concrete will not crack until the tension overcomes this active force inside of the steel. But be very careful, because this camber can be kind of dangerous, because as it goes up, it's gonna cause some tension at the top. And yep, it can cause some cracking if you're not careful with what you're doing. So how do you stop this? You use a technique called load balancing. It's totally awesome. It's where you balance the active steel or the load in the active steel with the tension that is likely present. You don't design for ultimate. You design your active steel to balance what's probably gonna be there. Then you add mild steel to resist overloads, extreme loads, your ultimate design loads, and they help also keep your cracks small that end up forming. There are tons of benefits with active reinforcement. You're gonna reduce cracking. You're gonna improve your durability. You can do longer spans, more economical cross sections. A good estimate's around 20% savings in your cross section. But there are challenges. It's gonna cost more, typically. The contractor you're gonna use is gonna to have to be specialized, have to know what they're doing. You're gonna to have to use specialized steel, advanced engineering, and also there's more risk. There's more risk during construction. There's also more risk in service because you have to protect that active steel. You have to be careful when you're stressing it. So in summary, active steel is an important tool to reduce cracking and help us produce economical structures inside of our concrete. You should check this video out. I talked about a particular of applying post-tensioning to slabs. I think you'll like it. If you dug this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Have you ever used active steel? Did you have good experiences? Did you have bad experiences? What do you think about it? I think it's got amazing potential and I'm a huge fan of it. And of course, subscribe to my channel. And if you're out there looking for some more fun, check me out on Instagram at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Bye.